Well, that's the God I know today. I'm glad that I know Him. Uh, you don't want to miss tonight's service. Come back praying. Bring somebody with you. Uh, the Lord will bless you if you'll do that. We got a big service planned for tonight. Special message on my heart. And it's time to start getting in youth rally mode, y'all. Uh, our youth rally is, in, in my opinion, the most special, best event for young people around this part of the country. Uh, every spring, we have an opportunity to reach a lot of people. And so it's a good time to get in. My, my favorite time of year is spring. I love it. Uh, but let's concentrate. I mean, you can look at the flowers while we're driving back and forth. Um, and uh, mowing the grass and uh, all of that. So let's get to work. Be here this evening at 6 p.m. Now, I want you to take your Bible this evening and turn to the book of Genesis, chapter number 28. The book of Genesis, chapter 28. Now, I want to use a story here this morning that I've uh, read, uh, about 10 years ago on these thoughts. And I'm going to give you some of these thoughts again this morning, that, um, different a little bit, but uh, same idea. And I'm talking about how, how we get to heaven. And I preached on this a couple of weeks ago, and maybe it might have helped somebody. Maybe there's somebody still struggling with that, but I want to illustrate it from a different angle. Genesis 28, this great story of Jacob and uh, Jacob's ladder, as what people have learned to call it. Every kid in Sunday school learns the story of Jacob's ladder. And let's look at that this morning and see what that would typify in the Bible. Genesis 28, 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba, and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillow. I believe I stayed in that motel. And laid down in that place to sleep. Ain't no wonder he had a dream. Uh, now, so he took these rocks out there in the middle of nowhere. I ain't, I ain't hold your finger there. And he laid down and made a pillow out of it. Good night. I mean, couldn't you took your coat off or something? Uh, that, that's a hard pillow. I have, I've been in that motel, ain't you? Uh, I go to motels where the pillows are like this thick. That's the way you know you're in a cheap one right there. And I get them off the other bed and everything and pile them up to make one pillow. About like that. Well, these are rocks. Rocks. And he dreamed, brother. And look here what he said in verse number 12. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. That's that land over there right now they're fighting over. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I want to preach the subject, Jesus God's ladder. Jesus, God's ladder. Bible said here that Jacob dreamed, and, he, and, and in this dream, he saw a ladder, and uh, he said that this ladder started on earth, and the ladder reached all the way to heaven. And he said God was up there at the top of this ladder, and the earth was down at the bottom of it. And it said angels were ascending and descending upon it. I like this, like like that. Um, I, I I think this ladder, like they were, is like you're in the mall and they have them escalators going both ways. See, you know, you see some people are just standing there like that and they're going down, and the other side's coming up, ascending and descending like that. Probably like that, ascending and descending on it. I remember when I first read that and I started reading the Bible and I, you know, the, they taught me that everywhere in the Bible, when you read something in the Bible, it's always a tie. That Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. 
That means everything in the Old Testament is, is a picture of something that's coming to light in the New Testament. As you've heard me say many times, don't ever forget this. One of the most important things you'll learn. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And you see a lot of types and shadows in the Old Testament. And then when you read the New Testament, you say, oh, that's what that's talking about. Oh, I mean, it starts all the way back there in Genesis. Adam, uh, a picture of Jesus. And well, it goes to sleep, picture of the death of Christ. God takes a rib right out of his side right here. That's what happened to Jesus on the cross. They stuck him with a sword right here. Blood and what came out, and he purchased his wife, the church. That's where Eve come out of. Adam's, Adam's, Adam's rib. From Adam's rib to women's lib, you've come a long way, baby. Uh, you just went the wrong direction. That's right. And uh, did you know what? Uh, they, they, uh, that, that's a picture. That's a type. When, when the, the Lord put the serpent on, Moses put the serpent on the pole, that's a picture of Jesus being lifted up. And sinners looked to him for his house. You, can't, you cannot miss that. The manna from heaven fell down. A picture of the daily portion of the word of God. All the, when Moses smoked the rock, that's a picture of the Bible said so that rock was Christ. And just on and on and on. Isaac, uh, or Abraham going to sacrifice Isaac, a picture of God, his son, giving his son. I mean, it's just over and over and over. And this story here is no different. This story here, uh, the Bible said, he saw a ladder. That ladder reached from earth to heaven. That, there were people going up it and down it. And I remember reading that and I thought, where have I heard that before? Ascending and descending. Ascending and descending. And it hit. And that's why you know the King James Bible, the Word of God. My mind went to John chapter 1 when I'd read over there where Jesus had saw Nathaniel under the fig tree. And you know what he said? He come to you and he said, uh, before, before you laid down here, I saw you, boy. And he said, uh, he said, how do you know that? You know everything. Uh, you, you must, you, you, you're supernatural. And you know what Jesus told him? He said, hereafter, you're going to see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Talking about himself. And the Bible said there in Genesis that the angels of God are ascending and descending on that ladder. And Jesus said, the angels of God are going to ascend and descend on me. So he's that ladder. Jesus is that ladder in the Old Testament. That's a picture of Christ. I mean, after all, think about it. Who is it that made a way from earth all the way to heaven? Who did that? Sure wasn't Mohammed. I mean, it sure wasn't Buddha. They couldn't have got that far off the ground. He made a way from earth to heaven. Who is it that said, uh, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the door of the sheep. If any man try to climb up some other way. Have you see that terminology? That's in your King James Bible. It's in a, now, I don't mean to insinuate that you climb up Jesus to get to heaven. I'm, that's not insinuating. And the Bible don't teach that. But the Bible does teach he is the way in order to get to heaven. Now, to illustrate this, um, uh, I'll need that. Uh, uh, Randy, if you don't mind, I think there's a the ladder. Did you leave that ladder in there, Matt? Uh, give me that one of them step ladder in there a minute. I wasn't going to do this, but since I'm talking about this ladder, I, I just want to show you that a little bit. And I'm going to show you how that uh, a ladder pictures the way from earth to heaven. Now we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, yeah, there you go. That's a good one right there, buddy. That's an old, is that, that ain't that old sorry one we had here. We had one way worse than this. Way worse. Is this that old and Steve? We had one a lot worse than this. This is broke. That's broke. Look at that right there. Big boy done that. Uh, uh, and uh, we, it's a, and you know what this ladder is, you walk up it like this. Now, I am going to walk up this ladder. I never have been scared of ladders. Don't worry about me. I didn't do that right there either. But uh, I, this is right. So this ladder reaches all. You don't see me get up here and see if I can touch it. Some of you say, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. We don't want you running. But anyway. Uh, this this is not a good ladder, bro. We need to work on this a little bit. Listen, I've seen some of them guys working on these old houses and stuff. They'd 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 nail a, a one by six on it right here to reinforce it. You ever done that? You're a redneck if you ever nail something on your ladder to keep it from breaking or, or reinforcing it like that. So we're gonna let this ladder right here represent what I'm preaching about today. Ladder. This ladder reaches from earth. Say the ceiling heaven, it ain't long enough. It comes short. That's a picture of all the religions in this world. 
They ain't going to get you there. That's a tower of Babel, brother. That's humanism. That's education. That's world philosophy. That's science. Well, we're making progress. Well, you might be, but you ain't going to get there. Not on this little scrawny thing. Uh, this ladder here is not going to get you to heaven. You got to have one to reach all the way. Three things I'll say about it this morning, and you'll, you'll get the picture. Number one, Jesus Christ is a safe ladder. Jesus Christ is a safe ladder. Amen? He's the only, he's, he's the only means of escape from the wrath to come on this world. He's the only one that's going to save us from the grasp of Satan and from the, from the uh, dominion of sin and the whirlpool of iniquity that's swallowing this world up. That, that ladder. That's right. That's right. He is a safe ladder. Amen? I had this boy up my house one time and uh, uh, my house on the front part, you know, my, my trailer part goes this way. The part we belong to is like this, so it's two-story. Living room, bedroom upstairs. So the, uh, the top of the, of the second floor is, I don't know, it, it's probably about that top. Maybe, maybe a little taller. It's probably taller than that, two-story. And uh, every year my gutters get full of leaves, and I'd have to climb up there and get them out. I've done that, I've done that my whole life. And uh, I had this boy stay over here at my house one day. And uh, he said, he said, Brother Danny, if you got anything you can do, anything I can do, I'll, I'll work for it. I said, all right, I'll, I'll pay you. I'll, I was going to give him $10 or something like that. Uh, I said, go up there and clean them gutters out. So I got the ladder. It's about like that, except it was just one long one, you know, extension ladder. And you slide it up and, 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 and put them little, little hooks on it. And I laid up against the house like I always done. Well, he got up there. And what's the, what, the thing about it is the, the ladder lays up against the house. And then the overhangs like this right here. So when you get up there, you actually have to just hang on and reach, whoa, like this, in, down in the gutter. Because on the overhang, you, you, how many of you guys ever done that? Raise your hand. Okay. All, all you men in here, I don't, and you have to, you're actually hanging backwards <laughs> like that, and you're having to reach up here. And I always just reached in there and done like that and swung them all over the yard. And everything. He got up there, he's about 17 or 18. He said, I can't do this. I said, what's wrong? He said, I'm scared. I said, well, just hang on, brother. Hang on with you with, with one hand and, and do it with the other. And you can't get on top because it's so steep. It's more dangerous that way than it is, I mean, it's like that. Uh, so I, I finally reached up there and got them out. And they told me, they said, uh, uh, the girls, they said, Daddy, you going to fool around there and fall off it there? I said, I am not. I, I've, all, I've climbed trees my, when I was little. I'm not scared of heights. I love to climb a tree. I love to get up on top of the house. When I go up on the mountain, I love just to get right on the edge. I've always loved. I've done the Grand Canyon like that. I look, and I know that's silly, but it, there's just something about, I don't know, I don't know, it's a, a spirit of adventure. I I, I've always loved heights. And I uh, love to get up on there and said, I'll be all right. And uh, sure enough, sure enough, one day I was there, I was by myself. I was going to clean the gutters out. And uh, it was a ladder like this, except, except it, was, it, it was like this, you know, so you had to lean up against the house, like that right there. And I was around back of the house, same height, and uh, this part was down on the concrete deck there, so it's slick. And uh, I put, put the ladder up on the house, and I was way up there, right there, hanging on, and I was getting them, I was getting them leaves out like that, and you ain't going to, it sure did. The bottom of that ladder went whoop, like that, and down I come. And I thought, oh boy, uh, there, I mean, I've fallen, and you ain't going to believe this. A miracle happened. That I mean, there's a fence right there with, with, with things like this, a sharp thing sticking up with them, with that fence down there. And right there, I left my grill there where I cooked out, and I landed right on that grill like a big bull. No lie. I'm not lying. I landed right on there. You know, like that. My knee made a dent in that, in that grill. And I got up and walked around and said, okay, stupid. Now look at what you just done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. My knee was a little banged up, but other than that, I did not get hurt. And you, you can still see, I can show you my, back of my house, where there's marks all the way down through there, where that, where that ladder did that. that. That wasn't a safe ladder. That wasn't a safe ladder. I'm so glad that I didn't get on the Lord Jesus Christ 
when I was 18 years old and get up there and start preaching and then start uh, seeing people get saved and start a ministry and then boom, he slides out from under me. He's a safe ladder. He's a safe ladder. You hear me this morning? If you put your faith and trust in Christ, you're, you're, you're all right. It's a safe ladder. He will not slide out from under you. He will not. It will not happen. It will not break. He, he ain't got one of, one of these things like that. Uh, Jesus don't have no weak spots. I've, I've seen them boys, uh, you know, when you're working on a roof and, and you have to carry a five-gallon bucket of paint up the ladder, that's whatever you weigh plus that paint. Five-gallon bucket of paint weighs what? Fit, 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 something pound? I mean, got like this, and I've seen them boys. I said, man, I don't know if I'd do that if I was you. Or shingles, that's even worse. A thing of shingles on you, on you like this, you climb. And I said, I tell you what you better do. You better step right on the side of them steps instead of here in the middle because I'm afraid you're going to break it. And, and sometimes they will. They said there's a sh- the guy's on a ship outside of Scotland and it's going out to the ship and the ship was crashing into the rocks. And they said it was the ship getting ready to crash into these rocks. And when it was crashing, somebody hollered, we got help. And they threw one of them little ladders over the side that's them little ladder like a ship has got rope and it's got sticks. The ladder is made out of rope like this, you know, and then it's got sticks for these things right here. And them guys escaped down there into the lifeboat. It was a safe ladder. I'm glad to report to you this morning, people. Jesus Christ is a safe ladder. He will hold you up. He, he will hold you up. Thank God. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, it, 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 uh, there's, been, there's been people broke for legs. There's been people, uh, I'm sure, killed, really. Of, of, there didn't be construction uh, sites and stuff like that. Fall and break your fool neck uh, up there trying to uh, get a hold of something or your foot slip or you're, you're maybe drunk from the light night. You know, you come in and work the next day or something like that. And people, come, people get hurt bad, but not one. No, not one. No, not one. Uh, there's never been one. Uh, that Jesus didn't say you're saved. You're safe. You're safe in the arms of the Lord. Hallelujah. You're safe in the arms of the Lord. That's right. Let me say secondly this morning, number two, Jesus Christ is a strong ladder. Jesus Christ is a strong ladder. I mean, he's got the strength to hold me and you and everybody else in this world up. That puts their faith and trust in him. The angels, angels is going up and down on it. I don't know how much the angel weighs. Uh, uh, they're spirits, but I guess them angels, I don't know, they're going up and down, up and down, up and down, like an like a, uh, escalator. And they were going up and down. It's a strong ladder. Hallelujah. It's a strong ladder. I read about this fella who was uh, working in a barn, and uh, he, he had to get, uh, uh, try and change the light in his barn, and he got up on the ladder and fell 15 feet and Blam! Broke two or three ribs, uh, messed up his, his arm, and he got hurt bad. He literally laid there for a while before somebody found him. And, of course, they fussed at him. You know, you're supposed to go to all these safety precautions and tie a rope around yourself or something. I don't know what you're supposed to do. That'll hang me. But if you, it, but uh, they, they got all these uh, rules about on working all these skyscrapers. Now, you know, I like, I like, as I said, I love heights. I love to get up on stuff. And look, I like to get up on the mountain and look. I like to get up on top of the church and look. But now, honest to goodness, these guys that get up there in New York City and they're working on cleaning these glass, and it's two miles, uh, I'm out right there. That's where I chicken out, buddy. Somebody else can do that, amen? They say, they get good pay. I bet they do. They ought to, <laughs> they, they ought to get good pay. I mean, Lord have mercy, you you fall out, you ain't gonna break no ribs. You're gonna be a greasy spot down there on the sidewalk. But now they, that don't happen with the Lord. The Lord is a strong ladder. There's been there's been times where one of them big cranes, uh, too much weight was on one of them cranes, and the and it you see now it actually bends like bends right in the middle, like your arm up. A crane, steel, and flops over like that. A bunch of people get killed. Uh, that's not going to happen with the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a man who was going down in the ship, 
And the captain didn't know what to do about it. And brother, the steps on the ladder was weak. And next thing you know, he's up and the, la- and the, ste- and the step broke. And he perished in the water. And the man was drowned. And they never did. Uh, he died right there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say the soul that on Jesus does lean for repose. He said, I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. I'm saying to you this morning, people, Jesus Christ is a strong ladder. Listen, they make fun of us out there in this old world. They laugh at us. They may they laugh at us like we're crazy. They make the biggest joke out of Christian people. They say you people are crazy. You out of here. Oh my goodness. I got up uh, the other day saying there was no evidence that Jesus ever even existed. That's what he said. He said, he said, there, there's no proof that Jesus ever listen, there's all kinds of proof that Jesus Christ ex- existed. Uh, historically, the historians of that day and time wrote and verified his existence. Them apostles, every one of them died a violent death, except for John. And they wouldn't, they tried to boil him in oil, and he wouldn't boil, and they put him on the Isle of Patmos, and they wrote the book of Revelation. But every single one of those apostles had their head cut off, <laughs> had their brains beat out, they were crucified, they were drugged through the streets, they were they were tortured like animals. Now you're not going to tell me that them guys did that for something they knew wasn't true. They believed it, brother. They believed it. They said he did. We saw the miracles. We saw him after he rose from the dead. We saw that guy said there's no evidence that Jesus rose from the dead, and there's not one I would. I don't know. He's just taking advantage of people's ignorance of the Bible. There's about 500 witnesses saw him after he come out. Of there. What am I saying this morning? I'm saying he's strong enough to get us through here, to get us out of here. He'll hold us up, people. He'll hold us up. He's not going to break underneath us. You say, what if they come find out and discover something that makes the Bible not true? It ain't going to break. Somebody found a mistake in the Bible. They'd have found it by now. It's been examined and re-examined. And if they do find one, like the song says, the mistake ain't in the Bible. It's in their brain. Amen. He's a strong ladder. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for faith in His excellent Word. Uh, what more can He say than to you He has said? See, it's not an angel. I've, I've, I've heard people say, oh, I was down there, you know, and, and I just feel like an angel saved me. And I understand that, and there probably is some truth to that. Probably, I believe in guardian angels. I believe God has let angels happen sometimes. And all that, but listen, when it comes to salvation, an angel ain't going to get it done. They're just ascending and descending. He's a ladder. Angels can only do so much. An angel can go up. angel can go down. Jesus is the way. He's a strong ladder. See, he, this ladder ain't going, I don't think. I have gained a little weight since my birthday. I have. And he, and, but this ladder here is, a, is not much, I'm telling you. But if, if I thought this thing, this thing, this thing will probably hold me up. I'm not going to get on this and in front of all y'all. But it'll hold me up. That's what I'm doing in my soul. You say, I'm scared to death of that. You got to not be scared to trust Jesus. The song says, I can trust Jesus. I can trust Jesus. Y'all, y'all can y'all do that? Get that and ready. I cannot. Something or another. These burdens alone. What well, the, the gist is, this ladder's strong. This ladder's strong. When I came as an 18-year-old boy, I came and they said, put your faith in Jesus Christ, Danny. And I learned from them old preachers that it was nothing good that I'd done. Not my being baptized. Not my church membership. Not me being good, giving money, doing whatever. That I, when it comes right down to it, What's going to take me from here to there is that ladder. That's Jesus Christ. Listen, this one won't do it. This one won't do it. It it don't go far enough. That's my third point. My third point. See that? That's my third point. You know, uh, uh, you know what? Here's my here's my last. Whatever. Jesus Christ is a, is a expansive ladder. What I say? He's a safe ladder. He's a strong ladder. He's a span, expand, the span. 
the span. Spansive means it reaches from earth to heaven. Why do we sing that? Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty God that God did what? Span at Calvary. Thank God, brother, when he made that way, he said, I'm not going to go halfway. I'm not going to go three-fourths of the way. The span reaches from earth down in the uttermost of the guttermost, brother, all the way up to glory where God's at the top of it. And I'm telling you, any man, woman, boy, or girl in this world who comes to Jesus by faith and said by faith, I'm putting my faith and trust in you, the Lord, He's long, it ladders long enough to get him out of the mire, brother, and straight on into glory. Can I say something to y'all this morning? He's going to get us there, y'all. We're going to make it by the grace of God. We're going to make it. Don't don't you be discouraged. Has the devil been getting anybody in here discouraged? Has anybody in here said, I just don't know, Brother Danny. I'm just about ready to give up. Let me give you some good advice. Let me give you some encouragement. The Lord didn't put you in this thing to drop you. He didn't. You didn't get saved to fall out. You didn't get in this thing to make it halfway and then give up. He made a way from earth all the way to heaven. Ever how far that is, that's how far he'll take us. Now, I'm glad to say to you this morning, thank God, ladies and gentlemen, that through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. I know not what tomorrow holds. I don't know how bad things are going to get. We don't know. We may not even be able to allow, be allowed to do this. And another five years, they may shut the doors on places like this right here. But deep, deep down inside, if you know He's there, He started something inside you when you got saved that He'll pull you out of here one day and take you all the way to glory. Hallelujah. That's shouting ground right there. Uh, you heard that story of you know, that little boy's out there one day and he's standing there like this holding a string and it was real cloudy like it was this morning and this man come up and he said, uh, he said, what are you doing? He said, I'm flying a kite. And that guy said, uh, you ain't flying a no kite, man. I don't see no kite. This is real foggy like it was out there today. You can just see about 50 feet up. And he said, well, I am. He said, you ain't flying no kite. He said, I am too. He said, well, how do you know it ain't broke off? Wind blowed it away. How do you know it's still there? And the little boy said, because every once in a while, I feel a tug. I feel that tug. I know it's up there. I can't see it, but I know it's there. And I thought, glory to God. Hallelujah, y'all. Listen, buddy, I've been, I've, been, I've been in the fog, ain't you? I've been there. I've been there. I know what it's like to seem like you're going to lose all your hope. I know what it's like to just want to throw up your hand and say, what's the use? I know what it's like. I just say, there ain't no use. I might as well just hang it up. I'm never going to make it. But listen, brother, there's always something that put a little tug on my heart strings that said he's still there. Glory to God. He's still there, people. He's still alive. I thank God. God, he's up there. And he's going to get us home one of these days. Thank God in heaven this morning. He's an expensive ladder. He's going to pull us home through. Hallelujah. I heard about this woman. She was worried to death about, about, our, about our sins. And she said, I've committed so many sins. I just, I just don't know if I'm going to make it or not. Preacher, I, I've just done so much wrong. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. And he said, uh, well, do you think Jesus will have to come down here and die again for them sins? She said, no. So do you think he should come out here and die for them sins again? She said, no, that's, that's preposterous. He, that's not going to happen. He said, so you think him coming and dying that first time was enough? She said, yes, it was. And thank God it was. He ain't going to have to. He don't need to come down here and die again. Hey, I got some good news for you. When he died for sins, he died for all of them. All of your past sins. All of your present sins. And all of your future sins. You know, listen, there's all future when he died on the cross. None of them have been committed. I'm not trying to give you a license to sin. I ain't preaching hyper grace and all like that. I'm telling you one thing. There's enough blood in the bank, brother, to pay for every sin me and you ever have committed or ever will commit. He's going to get us through. We're going to heaven one of these days. It's an expansive ladder. This ladder don't. What, what, if, what if this was he, this was earth and that was heaven? And the Lord said, all right, Danny, you want to go to heaven? Yes, Lord, I want to go to heaven. All right, there's your ladder right there. Okay, I'm on there. I got saved, got baptized. I joined the church. Lord, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I, I can't make it, Lord. 
And the Lord said, you're going to have to jump the rest of the way. Now, I've done all this for you. And I wiped out your past. And I give you a new life. Now, Danny, you are going to have to get up there the rest of the way. By, um, one more. <laughs> and and, and I, I can about make it. And see, you know what that is? That's all the religions of this world right there. You might get a little bit. You might do a, some good deeds. You might help out in the community and be a fine, upstanding fella and pay your bills. You might treat people right. But it ain't going to get you there. You're going to come up short all of sin and come what? Short of the glory of God. Now look. You see how high I was a minute ago? Now here, here's a drunk laying here in the gutter, and he's going to try to get to heaven. That's how high he can get right there. Which, which one of us is more saved? Maybe one of us. Well, you're closer than I was closer, but I still missed it. It's like missing first base, y'all. It's like missing first base. It's like missing first base. It don't matter if you miss it that far or half a mile. If you missed it, you missed it. You come short. You come short. It don't matter if you got that close. You still come short. Thank God this morning when you got saved, the Lord will take you on in. I remember going across that first time. I think is that the George Washington Bridge that goes from New Jersey to New York City? I believe it is. First one of the first times I went there, I was preaching in New Jersey, and they would they would let somebody in the church let me borrow a car. They had a brand new one of them little Sebring or bring, remember when them things come out? And it was a convertible. And they said, Here, brother Danny, you drive. I said, Cool. Let's go. So I drove that thing to New York City. And I remember going across that bridge. And I remember thinking, oh, This is a bridge. I mean, I've seen the bridge. <laughs> That's a bridge, brother. Cables, steel cables that look like they're about that big around holding that thing up. Solid steel. Going up like that. But then I'm on there and I think, You know what? This would be the day for this thing to break. There are 10,000 cars on this thing. And big old trucks. And you do. You, it does cross your mind. Oh, Lord. This thing broke, we'd be gone. And you know, I, I thought all the way, it'll hold us. It'll hold us. It'll hold us. It'll hold us. And sometimes you get like that in your Christian life. And before I, before I get through this morning, Sometime, you may be here this morning, and you may be in on those places where you say, I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. I, I don't know if this is going to hold me up, Lord. I don't know. I mean, I know the preacher says it is, and everybody claims it is, but they don't know what I'm going through, and they don't know what I'm, what I'm, is this, is this going to work? Am I going to make it? I'm about to lose, about to lose my marriage, and, about to lose my job, and, and I'm trying to stand for you, and I'm trying to stand more. Listen, I never forget you. I'm gonna tell about it so many times. When you go through hard times, when my sister Sandy had cancer, and, and that's just the tip of the iceberg to what our family has been through during all those hard years. Tip of the iceberg. Tip of the iceberg. And my sister was suffering. And everybody prayed for her, and we thought, maybe the Lord will heal her. Maybe the Lord will heal her. And I'll get to stand up in church and say, God healed my sister. You know, everybody wants that. Right. Everybody hopes for that. And every, anybody who ever gets cancer, we think, maybe this is my family. God will surely heal my, my sister. But he didn't heal her. She didn't get better. And she got worse and worse. And of course it tried her faith. And of course my mom uh, hurt and my sister over there and, and, and my, my girls and it hurt. And my daddy, daddy didn't know how to, how to take it. He didn't know how to handle it. And he just, it hurt him bad. She was his firstborn child. And I remember going through those dark nights and through those days and the whole time Something way, way down in here was like that cop thing. Something was holding on to me. Like, and even when you're doubting, even when you're doubting, you can have some serious doubts 
I mean, you go through a divorce and you go through a bunch of stuff like it can make you seriously doubt everything. You'll start questioning your whole, your own, your faith and everything. But deep, deep, deep down in there, there's something kept pulling. Something kept pulling. And I'm glad that I got hooked up, got on that ladder many, many years ago. And I fully expect with 100% assurance to walk right into the presence of God Almighty one of these days. And say, Jesus Christ got me here. He's a safe ladder. He's a strong ladder. And he's a expansive ladder. Oh, the mighty God that God did span. I don't care how low you've sank this morning. If you're here this morning and you're, you say, good night, all these church people. If they knowed how mean I was, they'd run me out. No, no, no. We're all like that. We're all like that. All, everybody in here, we're just a bunch of sinners saved by grace. God can get you from where you are and take you all the way to heaven this morning through trusting Jesus Christ. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. Come on, girls. They're going to sing this morning. Maybe, maybe somebody's here. Maybe somebody's here. Nobody's, nobody's moving. Please. Maybe somebody's here this morning. You say, Preacher, that was to me. God spoke to my heart this morning. And I want to just come and get down on my knees and say, Lord, I, I do want to trust you. And I'm, I, I don't want to doubt, get all tore up. Amen. Let's just feel, we ought to just feel this all up this morning, really. I mean, it's getting youth rally time. It's time to get on fire for God, people. The devil got you messed up and doubting and worrying and go all to pieces. They're going to sing about it. You can trust Jesus. Amen. You can trust Him. You can trust Him. I don't care if you're going through a divorce. I don't care if you're going through a drug rehab. I don't care if you're getting AA. I mean, I mean, I care, but you know what I mean. It don't matter. Listen, God wants to help you this morning. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, do something real today. Be that ladder. For some young man, some young lady, some boy, girl, mama, dad, get on this morning. Take that trip all the way to heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. They're singing this morning. They're singing. Join these on the altar. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't, don't be embarrassed. You come on right now. Amen. Amen. That's right. Come on, ma'am. If God picked up that sparrow, how about it, sir? How about it? How about it, visitor? How about it, church member? You need to come? Come on. Come on. Let's do business with the Lord. Amen. Let's do business with the Lord this morning. You know, the devil, he'll jump all over you. The devil will mess your mind up. Amen. But thank God you can trust Jesus. You can trust Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. For I am His child, Amen. and I can place so much trust Amen. in Him. Amen. 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 I can trust Amen. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. I can trust Him. I can him. trust Jesus. Ain't you glad you trust Him? Today, my friend, you can trust him today. He is my strong time. The strength in my oh, weakest yeah. hour. I can trust Jesus. He takes care. While they sing, it'd be a good time to move. It'd be a good time to move. How about it this morning? It'd be a good time to move right now. Come on. Amen. 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 That's right. Got some people up there doing business. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah.
Amen. Lord of God, amen. I want to go see God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But I lead on his will. For he always knows what's best for me. Everybody, everybody, you need to come now. secular humanists say, it don't matter what the liberal politicians say, don't matter what the Islam says, doesn't matter what the people from China say, I can leave here trusting Jesus. Listen, them people are crazy, y'all. They ain't got nothing. They don't have nothing. If you lived in China this morning, you wouldn't have what we got here today. They might be some in secluded areas, but you, you, you can trust Jesus. You can trust don't let nobody talk to you out of your faith. You can trust Jesus. Amen, brother. Amen. Y'all pray for him. He's back and lost his job. Richie's done good. He's done good, y'all. Come a long way. He's on that ladder. Amen. Amen. Remember that old song? That ain't right. But they say, I'm climbing up that ladder and I'm going. That ain't right. That ain't what I was preaching this morning. This, we're on the escalator. He done the work. We're just riding up it. You don't climb up Jesus. I uh, hope you got the point right. Okay. Uh, if you are, are planning on going on the Rockingham trip and needing a motel room, please try to figure that out. They're having revival this week, actually. And then they'll be up here on the 17th. Then we're going down there on the 22nd. So they're going to reserve motel rooms for whoever wants it. If you're too good to, to stay in somebody's house. But uh, uh, let me know that, please. And then uh, uh, tonight, this evening, choir practice at 5 o'clock. Church at 6. Come praying. We're officially kicking in youth rally mode. This Saturday night, 8 o'clock. Prayer meet. This is for everybody. You go out to eat on Friday night or Saturday night. I don't, but some of y'all do. And that's totally all right. Go a little early. Come on over and let's pray a while. Let's pray a while. Uh, uh, Saturday night at 8 o'clock. There's something special about when people get together and pray. Something special about it. So let's do that Saturday night. 
And uh, good night. I know it's March Madness and basketball is going to be crazy here in the next few weeks, but you better you better remember who's first. You better remember who's first. That's the Lord. That's right. All right. Uh, oh, one other thing. We, somebody, they got us a new piano in the junior church. And we got the other one back there in the back. If somebody wants that piano, it's yours. But you have to move it. Just let me know. It might need tuning a little bit. Uh, but it's it's not terrible. It just not need a tuning job. But if you like that piano in the back, you can have it. But you got to move it. Okay. All right. And then about the house, two houses down. If anybody's interested in that, we need to know that really, really quick. If you're looking for a house, four acres of land, us and you, Churchill, we're gonna, we'll work out a deal. So uh, we need that property really, really bad. So if somebody's looking for a house, let me know that also. Okay? All right. Heart's clear. We ready to be dismissed in a word of prayer. All right. Let's 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 pray. Everybody fellowship uh, uh, before you go and uh, be friendly in the Lord. Amen. Let's see. Dismissed.